Hey guys, so welcome to another video tutorial on Adobe Animate. So at the end of the video, this is going to be our expected output. It's going to look something like this. You have a play button which plays the animation, and then it stops, and then you click on play again, and then it plays a different animation, and then you can go ahead and play again, and then it loops back to the very first animation, and then it just uh, keeps on doing that. Okay, so let's begin. So I'll start off by creating the animation. I'm just gonna draw a circle first. And then make sure you select the entire thing and then convert it into a symbol. So I'll just name this one circle. And it's going to be a graphic symbol. And I'll place it here. Then I'll add another keyframe and then move the circle to the other side and then add the classic tween. Then I'll create another layer for the second animation. I wanted to start here so I'll put in a blank keyframe here. Then in my library I'm just going to reuse the circle symbol. Then I'll add a couple more keyframes. I'll add one here and another one here. Then I'll go back to the middle keyframe and then using my free transform tool, I'm just gonna scale the circle up. And then I'll go ahead and add the classic tweens. So now, this is what I have. So the animation just keeps looping. The next thing I want to do is I want to add some code here that will tell my animation to stop. So I want it to stop at three points. I want it to stop at the beginning and here at the end of the first animation. And once again, I want it to stop at the end. So I'm going to create a new layer for the scripts. I'll call this layer Actions. And then I'll go ahead and select the first keyframe and then I'll go up to Window, and then I'll choose Actions. And then here, um, in the area where I type in my code, I'm going to type in this dot stop. Okay. So what happens here is we are on frame one of the Actions layer. So immediately, the animation is going to stop. So that's what the stop is for. This means okay. So this uh, the this keyword changes its meaning depending on where it is. So right now, our code is inside the main timeline uh, here on scene one. So when you say this, this refers to the main timeline. So what you're saying here is uh, make this, which is the main timeline, stop. Okay. So I want it to stop here as well at the end of the first animation. So I want to make sure that I have a keyframe in here as well. So I'll insert a black keyframe and then I'll go to Window, Actions. So as you can see, now I'm on a different frame number. So this means that I am going to stop on frame 60. So you might have a different frame number here. This depends on uh, your frame rate and how long your animation is. Okay? But basically what this means is you're going to stop on this specific frame again. Okay? And then finally, I'd like to stop here at the end as well. So I have to insert another blank keyframe. Okay? So that's very important. If I don't insert another keyframe, then it's simply going to go back to the previous um, keyframe. Okay. All right, so now I've got my stop actions. So when I test my HTML um, project now, it's going to stop at the beginning. So the next thing I want to do here is I want to add the button, okay? So let's go back to the timeline. And then I'll create another layer. I'll name this one buttons, okay? And then make sure that your actions layer is on top. So I'm just going to drag the buttons layer down. And then I'll go to the first keyframe of the button layer. And then I'll go ahead and create my button, okay? So I'm going to use a rectangle first and then using the text tool using a black color 
I'm just going to type in play. So let's move that a bit here. Okay. And then I'll select the entire thing. And then I'll right click on it. And then I will convert it into a button symbol this time. So this one, I will just name it play button. So this is going to be the name of the button inside the library. Okay? But when I add some code, I'm going to have to give this another name, which is the instance name. So the instance name allows me to target the correct object in my code. Okay? So the instance name is not the same as the symbol name. Okay? So to be able to add an instance name to an object, you have to select the object first. Okay? So just um, click and drag in order to select it or just click on it once. Do not double click on it because it will make you go inside the symbol. Okay? Once the instance is selected, you go to the properties inspector and then you give it an instance name here. So I am going to name this play underscore btn, okay? So um, instance names have to be unique, okay? So I could have multiple buttons here, but each button has to have its own instance name, okay? So this one, I'm naming it play underscore btn. Instance names are case sensitive also, okay? So now that I have an instance name here, I could go ahead and add what you call an event handler, okay? So an event handler allows us to specify, for example, what should happen when we click on a button. Okay? So when we click on this button, we want the animation to continue playing. So I need to go back here on the actions for the first keyframe. So I need to go here because the button is also here. So the button starts here, so we need to initialize the event handler on this same frame number as well. So on the actions layer, I've selected the first keyframe, and then I'll go back to window actions, Okay, so we'll see the stop action that I put earlier. So now for the event handler, the first thing I'll do is I will create a function. So a function is basically a block of code. It's a series of instructions that um, will get called once you actually um, call the function itself. So in order to call the function, you need to give it a name. So I'll name this one play animation. And then the syntax is you end it with, a, um, with parentheses. And then you add curly braces. And then here inside the curly braces, you put the function body, which would be the instructions or the commands that you want to execute when you call the function. So for this particular function, we actually only want to call one line. And that line is this dot play. And then a semicolon. So we stop at the beginning. And then eventually, when we click on the button, we want to call the play animation function and then make the timeline uh, continue playing. So how do we um, register this function to the button now? So that's what the next line is for. I'm going to say this dot play underscore btn, which is the name of my button. And then I'll say add event listener. Then I need parentheses here and a semicolon. And then inside the parentheses, I need to give it some extra information. So the first thing I'll pass would be a string that says click. So this tells the event listener to wait for a click on play underscore btn. Once the click happens, we want to call play animation. Okay? Then you put in bind this. Okay? So be careful with the parentheses and the semicolon. So make sure that uh, they match here. Okay? So um, when we click on the button, it's going to call the play animation function. Um, this thing that says bind this, um, this simply ensures that inside the function, when you say this, it's also going to refer to the scene one of the main timeline. Okay, so, um, all right, so now that I have this, I could go ahead and test my HTML documents. So my play button is here, and then if I click on it, it should continue playing the animation. And then it stops again because if you remember, we placed a stop action um, at the end of the first animation. So the play button still works here. We initialized it in the um, first keyframe. And um, so this means that uh, all throughout the existence of the button here, the event handler is going to be active. 
So if I click on play again, it's simply going to continue playing from where we stopped. So if I click play, it's going to continue playing, and then it's going to play the growing and shrinking animation. And then it stops again here on the, um, at the end of the animation, because we put a stop action there as well. And then when I click on play, what happens here is, because, um, let me go back to the timeline here. Let me close this. So here on the, um, on the last keyframe, uh, so we're here, right? So if I click on play, there's no more frames to play. So by default, our animation is going to loop back here to frame one, where it's going to encounter a stop action. So if I click on this, it's going to loop back and then stop immediately. Okay? Then I'll go ahead and click on the play button again, and we just repeat uh, the whole process. Now, what if I want to make the animation play right away? So when I click on play, I want it to go back to animation one, but I'd like the animation to actually keep playing instead of just stopping here and waiting for me to click on the play button, okay? So one way to fix that is when I get here to the uh, end of the animation, when I click on the button, instead of having it loop back to frame one, I'm going to tell the animation to go specifically to frame two, okay, to this specific frame here. So if we go and jump here instead, it's not going to encounter the stop action because the stop action is here. So it goes here and then it continues playing because there's no stop action, okay? So the first thing I wanna do here is I wanna add a label um, to this specific frame. So I'll go ahead and add a new layer for the labels. Okay, So I'll just call this one labels. And then I'll insert um, a keyframe here on frame number two because this is where I want to add the label. So I'll right click on it and then I'll choose insert black keyframe. Okay, and Then making sure that it's still selected. I'll go to my properties inspector and then here on the label um, name uh, input field, I'll put in animation one, okay? So this allows me to put a label on this specific keyframe, okay? So now I'll go back here to the end of the animation. Now, back here in the buttons layer where the buttons exist, um, I need for this to be a keyframe. I need for the last frame to be a keyframe because I want to change the actions for this specific button. Okay? Because at this point, it's still going to use the event handler from um, from the actions from frame number one. Okay. So what I'll do here is I'll go to the buttons layer and then I'll insert a keyframe. So now the button that exists on this keyframe is essentially now um, it's a different instance of um, the button. Okay? So I could actually make changes to this and then give it a different event handler. So first I want to make sure I select the button and then I want to give it a different name just to be sure. So I don't want it uh, I don't want it to be the same name as the previous button. So I'll just name this one play2 underscore btn. Okay? And then I'm going to give it a new event handler now. So that new event handler code has to be here at the last keyframe of the actions layer as well, right? Because um, the new button is here uh, um, at the end of the keyframe, uh, at the end of the timeline. So the new event handler should be at the end of the timeline as well so that they match with each other. So I'll go back to the actions um, panel. So make sure that you've selected the last keyframe of the actions layer. So here, I'll go ahead and create a new function. So I'll name it um, replay animation. Okay. And then for this one, okay, I'll say this dot, but instead of saying play, I want to go to a specific um, frame that has a label. So um, the command for that is called the go to and play um, command. So I'll type in go to and then a with an uppercase and then P with an uppercase for play. And then inside the parentheses, I'll go ahead and put the label, the name of the, the frame that I just labeled, which is animation one. Okay, so whatever I labeled that frame has to be what I type in here. Okay, so after that, I'll go ahead and register the play two underscore BTN. 
to the replay animation function. So add event listener. Now I'll go ahead and say click in quotation marks. And then I'll say replay animation dot bind. Oops, dot bind this and then parentheses and semicolon. So this should um, complete the code that I need. Okay. So we start off here and then I click on play. And then I click on play again. We'll have the growing and shrinking. Then I'll click on play once more. So now it should go back and play immediately because it's actually not going back to the first keyframe with the stop action. It's going to the second keyframe, which has the animation one label. So if I click on play, it plays immediately. All right. Okay. So um, let's see. So just a couple more, uh, just a bit more cleanup. Um, so let's say, um, so let's say after, um, after I click on play, right, uh, it goes here uh, to this uh, keyframe here, and then begins to play the growing and shrinking animation. So let's say I don't want the play button to appear here anymore. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just go here in the buttons layer, and then insert a blank keyframe. So that essentially removes the play button from here on out. And then when we get to the final keyframe, where we have the play2 underscore btn, of course it's still going to be there because it was in a different keyframe. So it's not going to get affected by uh, this blank keyframe that came uh, before it. Okay. So now um, we have uh, this button which appears from here to here. Okay. So from this point up until uh, this point, so this button over here is using the event handler from this specific keyframe, okay? which is um, this one right here. Okay. So now if we decide to add you know, more buttons that maybe we'll start here or here or here, so you're gonna have to add uh, new keyframes um, in there and then in the actions layer you're gonna have to add a matching keyframe and then put the new event handler there because you're gonna need to um, create the event handler um, at that point because um, uh, that is where the new button will start okay all right so there goodbye <laughs>